Hi everybody, it's Allison with the Rochester Museum and Science Center. Thanks so much for joining me for today's science story time. Today, I'm in a fort and we're gonna make a really fun bear claw craft. But first, we're gonna get started and we're gonna read one of my favorite stories called Sleep Big Bear Sleep by Maureen Wright and illustrated by Will Hellenbrand. Sleep Big Bear Sleep. Old Man Winter from a storm cloud spied his big bear friend in the countryside. He leaned to the earth and softly sighed, Sleep, Big Bear, sleep. But Big Bear didn't hear very well. He couldn't sleep in his den, in the dell. He thought he heard as twilight fell, Drive a jeep, Big Bear, drive a jeep. So Big Bear yawned as he drove around in a jeep on a road just south of town. But after a while, he stopped in a park. An old man whispered as it grew dark, Sleep, Big Bear, sleep. But Big Bear didn't hear very well. He couldn't sleep in his den in the dell. He thought he heard as dry leaves fell. Sweep, Big Bear, sweep. So Big Bear went to a house down the street and swept each room so nice and neat. But after a while, he yawned again. An old man winter warned his friend, sleep, Big Bear, sleep. But Big Bear didn't hear very well, and he couldn't sleep in his den in the dell. He thought he heard as shadows fell, leap, Big Bear, leap. So Big Bear found a frog he knew and played leapfrog while the cold wind blew till all at once he fell to the ground. The wind through the trees was the only sound, and Old Man Winter said with a frown, Sleep, Big Bear, sleep. But Big Bear didn't hear very well. He couldn't sleep in his den in the dell. He thought he heard as darkness fell. Dive deep, Big Bear, dive deep. So Big Bear padded to a clear blue lake, finding it hard to stay awake. He dove in deep and swam to the shore. He had never been so very tired before. His head dropped down and he let out a snore and Old Man Winter said once more, Sleep, Big Bear, sleep. But Big Bear didn't hear very well. He couldn't sleep in his den in the dell. He thought he heard a snowflake spell. Climb a mountain steep, Big Bear, steep. So Big Bear trudged to the mountaintop where the cold wind blew and the temperature dropped. He sat on a stump on the highest spot and wished for a blanket and a fold-up cot. Then he stumbled back down with his eyes half shut, so tired he didn't know which end was up. Old man yelled while shaking his head. Hey there, bear! Did you hear what I said? It's winter time. Now go to bed. Big Bear's eyes were droopy and red. You could have told me before, he said. He lumbered nearby to his cozy den, rubbed his eyes, and yawned again. He put on his PJs and blew out the light, and fluffing his pillow, he said, good night. Thanks for listening along to Sleep Big Bear Sleep With Me today. Today I want to talk to you about a couple different things about bears. The first project we were gonna do together today is make some fun bear claws. These are great for dress up, you could do puppets with them, and they're super simple to make. You need a few materials that are probably hidden around your house somewhere. The first being 
brown paper lunch bags. You're gonna take your lunch bags, and so you can have one for each hand. What you're gonna do is take the top, this is the folded end here, and you're gonna fold those top two corners down and to kind of make a little triangle. Next, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take black construction paper or dark brown construction paper, white construction paper, just any other type of paper that you wanna use to make the claws on your little bear claw here. From there, you're gonna wanna practice your shapes and cut out a few different shapes to make your claw. The first, find something you can trace around. This is gonna be the center part of that paw. And then you wanna make three about even sized isosceles triangles. Isosceles triangles, one of the best types of triangle shapes, they have two equal sides, two equal sides and lengths. You can see that right there. Then what you're gonna do is take tape, glue stick, whatever you have laying around, just put a little piece right behind each of those cutout pieces. Then slide your hand right inside and you're ready to go. You might also notice I'm not at the museum today, but I did build a fort. I was thinking about our big bear friend and his den and where he was going to hibernate for the winter. And it got me thinking, well, how could we build a den right here at home? This is a great project to do in your home. All you need is the furniture or materials around you, maybe a sheet or a blanket, also snacks, because if you're gonna build a fort, you need to have snacks to eat later when you're hanging out in there. What I like to do when I build a fort is I like to think about all of the stem properties that we've learned about. You want something balanced, right, with a good solid base. My fort, I just have a sheet over two chairs, plus I have the table. So again, using that triangle shape that we've learned about, that's really strong and stable. From there, what you need is to counterweight it. Books, you saw my cat up there, anything to hold that sheet in place so you can crawl in, you can throw a blanket down underneath you like you're going on a picnic with your friends, grab some pillows. This is a fun place to hang out and learn more about bears and what they do in the winter. As we've often heard, bears hibernate in the winter. Hibernation is a type of an adaptation. So physical adaptations are like the bear claws, some part of the animal's body that has adapted or changed over time that enables them and helps them to survive and to thrive in the certain environments. We learned a lot about physical adaptations and characteristics when we met our beaver friend a few weeks ago, but bears, like our bear claw here, these sharp claws are gonna help them dig in the dirt and maybe find roots or plants to eat or protect themselves against different predators or other animals and to help them climb trees, which is why this is a physical adaptation. The other type of adaptation is behavioral. So changes that happen with the season that animals follow to help them survive and thrive. And hibernation is another type of adaptation. Many animals snuggle up in caves, burrows, or holes in the ground, holes in hollowed out tree trunks, and sleep during the cold winter months. They probably wouldn't wanna sleep in my fort here, but when it's so cold in those winter months and when food is harder to find and the cold weather makes it harder for their bodies to work, there is an adaptation that helps them with that. It's called hibernation. When an animal hibernates, its heart beats very slowly and it breathes less. The animal's body temperature goes way down to just a few degrees above freezing. The animal also falls into a deep, deep sleep. It takes a long time for, hi for a hibernating animal to wake up. There's ground squirrels in Alaska that hibernate for eight months of the year, which is just crazy. That's a really long nap. Hibernating is a great adaptation for animals because they do not have to try to find food and they don't even have to go outside in the cold at all. They just sleep all winter long. Because the bodies slow down and stop working in the way it normally does, and because the animal is not up and about and moving and using all of its energy, the animals are able to survive the winter by burning off the fat that they've stored up. You know when you see animals out there, they're really foraging, they're eating a lot before winter comes? This is so they can build up their fat reserves and survive through the winter. Thanks so much for joining me for Science Story Time today and for listening and learning more about adaptations, both physical and behavioral, and for joining me in our Fort Building Challenge. I'm Allison with the Rochester Museum and Science Center, and I hope to see you next time.